Welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and I will be your host of this knitting podcast or primarily knitting podcast. Might also have some sewing or crochet from time to time. Uh, today is July 31st, 2017. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia where I live with uh, my husband and my grandson is frequently at my house as I provide um, his daycare. So he's here right now taking a nap. So I'm taking advantage and starting episode one of this knitting podcast. This episode is titled In Which We Begin. So to start off, um, I'd like to tell you maybe what's a little bit going to be a little bit different about this podcast. And because I watched so many of them, and I truly thought there was no room for another one, most likely. But I still look for podcasts, even though I watch so many of them. I do all of my knitting to podcasts, all of my sewing to podcasts. So I thought maybe there is room because I'm still looking always for something new. And so I, I thought there needed to be something a little bit different. And I came upon an idea one afternoon when I was remembering some things that I did while I was a library media specialist. I retired two years ago. I spent um, many years teaching third grade and then went back to school at night for two and a half years to get endorsement to be a library media specialist. So for my last three years, I was library media specialist in an elementary school. And I used many knitting children's literature books to integrate, used to provide an integration to the curriculum. So if I found a way that I could use a book that was about knitting with instruction, I did. And I really enjoyed it, and so did all of my students. So I thought every episode I would introduce you to a book that is about knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, or just the production of wool and where it comes from. Any books that I used or that I've found since I retired. So uh, that segment will come up pretty soon. I thought I would start off with some finished objects. Um, and the first one that I'd like to share with you is probably the my most favorite shawl that I've ever knit. I do knit a lot of shawls and a lot of socks. Those are my two favorite things to knit. So this shawl is um, from Curious Handmade in the Shawl Society 2 collection it was the second shawl called Sprite's Fen, and it was a three it designed as a three color shawl. And I did go through all of my yarns looking for three colors that would work together. I do struggle with putting three colors together, even two sometimes. But um, I'd had a gradient set that I bought last year while I was doing the Shawl Society. I'd ordered it from Seven Sisters Arts. I actually ordered two sets. I'd ordered the um, Aurora colorway, but I didn't think it was going to come in time. So I also ordered the um, Marine Tonal Shift, and they both came the same day. So I used the Aurora colorway for the Aurora shawl, and I had saved this uh, gradient set, and I really felt guilty about never using it for anything. So I decided on this shawl, once I actually did see the shawl, I decided to take the mini skeins and make a magic cake and just make a gradient shawl. And I'm really glad that I did. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I started with the darkest shade in this colorway. And this, this shawl is um, a half pie shawl. It has a lot of garter stitch and some lace, but the lace is easy. So it starts off up here and then it starts getting lighter and lighter and then the lightest shade was at the bottom. I did add two extra, I think two extra repeats, so maybe four, four back, you know, back and forth it would be, have been made um, for two. But I added uh, beads at the bottom. It was not designed as a beaded shawl, but I've beaded a lot of shawls before. And um, I had some beads that matched, so I thought that I would add some. And I like the way that the beads turned out. Um, maybe I would have done it differently if I could have imagined it before I did it. I kind of liked this, where it followed the wave pattern a bit more, so I might have done it all like that. But it turned out 
fine. I'm really happy with it. It's very light, squishy shawl. Um, and I, I think everyone I saw on the finished objects thread, everyone was gorgeous. But this is the yarn that I use, Seven Sisters Arts. And it was a marine tonal shift. Meridian is their base. And I think there were six colors. I had less than a yard left over. I used all of all the other colors because I made a magic cake. And then I um, had about a yard and a half left over when I finished. So that was really good use of yarn, which is uh, makes me feel happy that I was able to use more of the yarn. That's kind of a first. So, unless I run out, <laughs> that happens too. So uh, this is Sprite's Fen, and you've probably seen this. Um, pattern. I love, love, love Helen Stewart's patterns. The way she writes them is the way I like with to, uh, row by row and how many stitches are supposed to be there because when you make a mistake um, I can't always find it if I don't know the, what the stitch count is supposed to be. So I am participating this year in the Shawl Society too. I did the first shawl which is back here. This is um, the Fairy Hill shawl and I've just finished the third one, which is the Villa Wrap. So my Villa Wrap, it's a three color shawl. I used Ba La Hoya yarn. For all three of my yarns were this Ba La Hoya. It's 100% merino with a high twist to it. It's a fingering weight. This is color is called La Perla. And this is gray onyx. Different tag, but it's the same brand and same base, everything's the same. And Pretty in Pink was my pop of color, which was used for the lace. So the Villa Wrap, it's the first time I've done a rectangular, I've made scarves before, but never a rectangular wrap. And at this end, I noticed a couple of people on the thread the chat thread in the Curious Handmade for this shawl had put a rogue stripe, as somebody called it. I, I like that terminology. Um, an out of place pink stripe, and I really like that detail. I did not follow the pattern. It, everything's correct, number of repeats across, and the lace, it, the chevrons are all correct. But um, when I started knitting, and I was on this end, started knitting, um, when I got about this far, um, I, I hate making make one right. It just, um, I can do it. It's just that it slows me down and I, I always have trouble getting my needle in to catch the stitch. So it really slows me down. And I, I use uh, Chow Gu needles, lace, the lace tips, which are pretty sharp. They're not as sharp as signatures or the high high sharps, but this wrap requires purling back every row. Uh, maybe, no, I, th I think purling back every row. And when I purl using either signature or high, high sharps, I gouge my finger. I end up with a puncture wound and I can't knit then. So I can't use something that sharp. So it, I struggle. So what happened was I, I got this far with the chevrons. And I said, I've got to do something else for a while. Um, so I, I, I just decided to move to the lace, and after I did that, I just kind of uh, planned it out myself to do um, a symmetric shawl so that I had fewer, of, or at least got a bigger break from that make one right. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It is a decent length, and mine is just more, hers was asymmetric. This is just more symmetrical. Has, uh, same size. The chevron sections are all the same length and the lace sections are the same length. So I was very pleased with this as well. It's very light. I really enjoyed that Ba La Hoya yarn. I have three, I think three more skeins of it. I always love the colors and then every time I try to put it together it's like, oh that doesn't go. It doesn't gonna look good. So um, I was happy to finally be able to use some stash yarn, although I had to go out and buy the um, the gray. I, di I didn't have three colors again that worked together, so it was two stash and one new purchase of yarn. So very happy with the um, Villa. 
Oh, I'm supposed to tell you my needle sizes. The Sprite's Fen was a US 6, um, and that's a 4.0. I have to look because I don't know the millimeters or even remember what I used. 4.0 millimeter needle, and I think that was the suggested. And on the Villa Wrap, I used the suggested again US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. Drop my notes there. Um, so the next finish object I want to talk to you about um, is a pair of socks that I completed recently. I'm participating in Kristen from uh, the Yarngasm podcast and Woolen Vine Yarns in her box of socks cow, which I know just about everybody has. It sounds so fun to knit 12 pairs of socks and have them all for yourself at the end. And I usually do give my things away, so this time I'm not. I'm going to keep all these socks for myself. So this pair of socks is, oh, I think we hear somebody in the background there. Um, let me get it on a sock blocker. I had one on a sock blocker, but I pulled these out of order. Okay, so this is Tea and Scandal, which is a Miss Marple based pattern or inspired pattern. And it was written by Olivia Varial. I'm not positive I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's known as, I think, This Handmade Life on Instagram. And she has several Miss Marple patterns. And I'm a big Agatha Christie fan. I've read all of her books multiple times. And so when I saw that um, she had a Miss Marple set of patterns, I decided to do them. And I did not have any sock yarn that would, I have the pattern, I did not have any sock yarn that I thought looked as nice as what was on the pattern. Here's a little picture of the pattern and they're done in this pretty pink. And I just thought that soft color looked so nice with the lace pattern. So I had one skein of yarn, sock yarn, that would work but I had purchased it as part of a kit uh, put out by Suffolk Socks and she had the wool barn dye some yarn for her for her school socks rock sets and the color that um, I had ordered when I ordered the kit from Suffolk Socks with this yarn in it and it had uh, the patterns as well was the spring colorway and I thought this color would look nice on this sock and I, I'm very pleased with it. I like the little pops of purple. I did it. I, I This pattern is written toe up and when I knit socks toe up I'm never happy with my increases. So I decided that um, I, I, the lace really didn't matter one way or the other. I just did them top down. I put in an afterthought heel which is my go-to. I, I do a lot Less than half of my socks will have a heel flap, gusset, and heel turn. Um, but I do a lot of self-striping, and when I do, I, I, that's how I started using the afterthought heel, the true afterthought. And so I, I tend to do that a lot. Fits me all right, especially with the lace here. I thought it would definitely have enough stre stretch across the top, which is where they tend to stretch with the afterthought heel for me. I have a high arch. And I used, um, I think, a rounded toe, which I got off Mina Phillips' vanilla sock recipe pattern or recipe. And um, I like that rounded toe, too. So essentially, I was using the lace pattern. And she doesn't have the lace go around the back, which was fine with me. I usually do a design all the way around if I do a design. But I think it, it turned out nice. I like them. Um, and so this will go in my box of socks for that cow. And I have, um, oh, I used, um, for that particular pattern, um, I did my socks concurrently. Um, I was doing magic, I was going to do magic loop, but for some, I usually do two at a time magic loop, but for some reason I didn't. I um, used my Chowgu Twist Minis in a size 1, 2.25 millimeter, and on my sock, I, this is 16 repeats of the lace pattern. I counted on hers, and hers, it was fewer, but mine, this, and even though I don't really care for a terribly long leg, um, and I don't even care for a terribly long cuff, especially one one by one twisted rib, I 
make that as short as possible. Um, but I needed 16 repeats to make it a good length on the sock. So my next thing to show you is also a pair of socks. And this was um, the very first socks that I ever knit. Excuse me, get my notes there. Start off by telling you I used a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle and I um, did these socks concurrently. That's not right. No, I, I did not do it concurrently. I did an afterthought everything on these socks because I was using a sock blank. And it's a single sock blank without, you know, so you can only do one pair at a time. Since I usually do two at a time, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try this afterthought everything. I didn't use pattern or anything. I just knit a really long tube and started with the cuff and did the really long tube, tube put the toe in, cut them across the middle, put another toe in, and added the true afterthought heels. So this is an Andre Sue Knits sock blank, and this is what I have left. It had five butterflies, and at the beginning there was a larger blue section, so um, then, then you see at the end here. And I did go a little bit into this fourth butterfly, but that's quite a bit left, which is not surprising because I always have a lot of sock yarn left from a skein as well. I I had to have this sock blank, and I can't tell you how many times I would see that they were going to be in her shop, and I would go to the shop, and I would just miss it, and I was so discouraged. And so finally, one week, she didn't have them. I did get in, and there were still some sock blanks. So I ordered another one that I really, really wanted, which was the Swan sock blank. And um, the very next week, I think, she had Monarchs in there, and I got in again. So I was so happy. Um, when I was teaching third grade, I raised monarch butterflies with my students and we raised them ethically from milkweed planted at school as well as milkweed in my garden. I have a butterfly garden and I have lots of milkweed and we would, I would just harvest the eggs, we'd bring them in and we reared them in the classroom or raised them in the classroom. You rear children, not, not butterflies. We raised them in the classroom. We tagged them and released them. And um, so monarchs have a really special place in my life. I could watch their life cycle endlessly. So I was so happy to get this sock blank and I'm gonna do something special with what's left of it. I, I was hoping I could get a little pillow or something. I think I might be able to figure something out from that. But these are the finished socks and I'm really pleased with them. What I like about the way they look, this pattern, is I have seen uh, many photographs of monarchs down in Mexico. They migrate. This is the longest migrating insect in the world, and they migrate to the oyamel fir trees in central part of Mexico, which is a rainforest. And if there are million upon million of them in the air there and you'll see the blue sky through and just all these butterflies in the air and this reminds me of that picture that I've seen so many times or many pictures like that that I've seen so many times and so I'm just thrilled with this pair of socks. My next pair of socks is um, this pair. These are my white melon socks and they were knit from this is this is what I have left originally when I ordered it I only ordered the skein of the watermelon self striping and I until this year I really never put contrast heels cuffs and toes in but two reasons why I started doing that one I set some sock goals for myself this year to do some different things things I haven't done before um, for instance more lace patterns and I wanted to do Afterthought Everything, which I've now done twice, and, uh, and some contrast. And then the other reason I decided to do some contrast was for the very first time I had to actually um, take heel out of a sock that had worn out, one of my very first pairs of socks, the heel wore out, and it had an Afterthought heel. And I always heard everybody say, oh, it's so easy to change the heels. But I didn't find that to be so. It's because inside the sock, as your foot 
as had friction and whatever, they've almost not felt it, but gotten fuzzier inside. And I found it really hard to find the beginning. Um, and when I could get hold of the yarn, it had stuck together. It was an opal um, sock yarn I had used, and I always hand washed, never in the dryer. So I decided, you know what, it would have been so much easier if it had been a different color. I could definitely have found where that beginning was and uh, maybe cut closer to it and had less to pick apart. So that, I'm sorry, off on a tangent there. But these socks, let me again get my notes. These were done on a US Zero. I don't usually do a Zero, but I bought, um, I, I can't use the nine inch Cirques. I've, I have about six pair. I've tried and tried and it, I've, not, I've struggled with them. But I was at Maryland Sheep and Wool this year and I found a pair that were eight inches. They were Addy. And so I bought one, one, and it was size zero, 2.0 millimeter. And I knit these afterthought everything as well. But what I noticed as I was knitting, just because I had just done the Monarchs that way, but I had done Magic Loop, I had realized the way I was knitting, if I kept going, it was going to make a sock, but it, the stripes would have gone in this direction on the second sock, which is just a little bit of difference. But I did want them to be the same. And so I just decided at the end, I did not do another cuff so that I'd have the inverse. I did a toe and then took them apart and I had to knit on the cuff at the top of one and the toe at the end of the other and um, then put in the afterthought heels. And I'm really pleased with these. This wool is from, I think it's Critium Handmade and this is a uh, Roxana sock, 75% merino, 25% nylon. I knit um, this little two by two ribbed cuff and then including that all the way to the end, I knit 27 inches and then added my first toe, then took them apart. So this made a little bit longer leg than I usually do, but um, I'll, I like it and I think I'll enjoy wearing those. So that was, um, kind of fun. So those are my fi most recently finished objects. So next I would like to talk about what I have um, on my needles right now, so my work's in progress. And the first thing that I have, it should shortly be a finished object, I'm participating in a mystery knit along with For Shawl, and it's being done by Susanna IC, and it is called Summer is Coming. And I'm using a gradient yarn for this from Wandering Wool. And here's the tag, Wandering Wool. And it's on North Country Sock, which is 75, 25, a superwash merino and nylon. There were 463 yards and 100 grams on here. The colorway is called Great Barrier Reef. And I'm hoping to be able to use all of it on here, not sure if I will be able to or not. So I've got it um, contained in this cool little device, a circular needle holder, and I just got this recently from Knitting I Love, and I love it. It's, it's made out of some really cool material, and I did have to go on twice though, see now how do you get it so they stay in? But um, it's been really nice because then you don't have your needles st sticking into the knitting. I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but sometimes when I shove stuff in a bag, um, I guess I'm not careful enough and I, you, the tips might get through some lace or even through any, any kind of knitting and might pull some stitches a little bit. So I'm really pleased to have that. I um, came all the way from Ireland took a little while but it, you know, it really didn't take too long so this is the the shawl it starts it's a crescent shaped shawl it starts with some garter stitch at the top and then it moves into several different lace sections the last clues coming out this week they've come out either on a Wednesday or a Thursday so um, I'm should be able to finish but what this grain is doing is um, starts with the blue, went into the greens, and then the, I'm knitting, pulling the yard from the inside, so at the end it'll be the blue. 
So that's why I really want to be able to use up all of it. So I'll try and if I don't, I'll try and figure out some way to add another, probably not lace repeat because they're pretty long, um, re you know, s several rows. But maybe I can do a different bind off or something. So I'm enjoying that. I did her mystery knit along last year as well. Um, mystery knit alongs are something I love. I did my very first one a couple of years ago. It was done through Jimmy Bean's wool and it was an Outlander shawl. It was the very first shawl I ever made. It was the very first project I ever beaded and it was my first mystery knit along and I was hooked on all three. I'm not beating this shawl. Uh, there were several variations of that pattern. Small, medium, large. I'm doing medium. Um, there you could not beat it, beat it lightly, beat it uh, medium number of beads or beat it a lot. And I decided since I was working on the Villa Wrap and this at the same time and also some socks and things I thought mm, I think this time I won't bead. Um, but now I'm thinking um, I do have some beads that will go with it. Maybe I'll just bead the edge because it's a pretty airy lightweight shawl at this time. It feels like it's gonna be airy and light once it's blocked. So some beads along the bind off, depending on what kind of bind off she has, might be nice. But I know she did off, say that was an option. The needles I'm using for this are, I don't remember, I think it, and, and I know that I won't be able to read this. Chaku needles are really hard for me to read. Um, I think this is, I, I, it was two sizes and I think I did seven and nine. I went up one, it will be on my project page if you really wanted to know. Um, I keep pretty detailed notes on my project page and if for some reason there's a question that I haven't answered, I'm going to start a Ravelry group and I'll put a question thread so that I can answer any questions that I might have forgotten to ask or answer or I might uh, put it on the screen so that you'll have that information. I dropped my notes so I don't want to go digging around for them. Okay, the next thing that I'm working on is not something that I look to finish in any time, any particular time. I always have a pair of socks that are just there when I'm in between projects or maybe I think I'm going to have to go someplace and there'll be some waiting involved. I'm not a car knitter because I have to watch the road. I get car sick otherwise. And anytime I, I can do it without looking, but I, it's not worth it because I drop stitches all over the place. So these socks are called my Beam Me Up socks. And I'm doing these on DPNs. Usually when I do DPNs, I'll do them concurrently. But I couldn't in this case because the yarn came in this already wound ball. And I didn't want to undo it and make two cakes. So. I just decided, or two balls, I just decided to do one at a time. And I, I do that sometimes with um, socks that are on DPNs. These are 1.5, and I don't know the millimeters right now, but one, US 1 1.5, they're on car buns. And I do like those um, for knitting. I have a short 2x2 two two rib cuff, and then it's just striping with these fluorescent green and yellow stripes separated by the black, thin black stripes in the large gray speckle section. And she provided um, this highlighter yellow mini ball of yarn to do the heels, cuffs, and toes. I think this is enough for all three, but I'm just gonna do the heels and toes because I didn't think about it when I just started off. And so I don't have that cup. This project is in my, and I didn't say about my other one, so I'll go back to it. This is in my little sock bag with the blue fabric and the sheep. This is from Craft House Magic, Allie at Craft House Magic. She has a podcast that I've been watching from the beginning and I just love. And she has an Etsy shop where she sells primarily project bags and stitch markers or progress keepers. So this one has a cute little uh, sheep progress keeper and goes with the bag and it's a nice little sock bag. So I really enjoy that one. And um, I was keeping my Summer is Coming shawl in my Daisy Said project bag, which I love. This is, um, it's got outside, four little outside packet, pockets, Daisy Said. 
and I got this at the Powhatan Fiber Festival or Festival of Fiber and I think she also sometimes has them available at the yarn store in Midlothian, Virginia. I don't think I said I'm coming here from Manassas, Virginia. So this Midlothian's about a two hour drive from where I am. But I went down to the Fiber Festival and they had them there. But in the Dances with Wool yarn shop in the same general region, sometimes these bags are also for sale. So I, I really like this because it has this these metal bent pieces front and back so it keeps it um, this shape and it gives it gives it some sturdiness okay and when I bought it I um, had to buy the notions pouch with it too because it matched even though I actually make some that look fairly similar to this it uh, I'd have it because it matched and it was nicely made as well her backs are really nicely made so my next work in progress would be my mitered square blanket, the coziest memory. I'm using the Kemper Ray free pattern on Ravelry, and I'm keeping it in this bag, which is from You So and So. And this is uh, River Otters, and it reminded me of a student that I had when I was teaching third grade, and he was obsessed with river otters or um, I think sea otters as well otters he was obsessed with and um, his mother is a knitter and it was while I think the year after he was in my class when he was a fourth grader that um, I started knitting I, I learned to knit from YouTube entirely and I would talk to her about knitting and she is actually a pattern writer and a, she has patterns in um, published books and uh, is a wonderful knitter and so this reminded me of him and of my start in knitting because she encouraged me so much and I think that's the most important thing in the world and as a teacher that was I, I had a little phrase a little uh, saying and it it wasn't by me and I, I can't repeat it word for word even though I think it was only four lines but it said, you know, if you did certain things, what result would be? And the last line was, if you encourage me, I may not forget you. And I think that's so important for anybody trying to learn anything is that encouragement. So she encouraged me. I remember saying, well, I was knitting along there, but there seemed to be holes. I, I don't know what happened, why I would have these holes. And she says, that's not a hole, that's a design feature. And it just made me feel good about, you know, here's this professional person, professional knitter, and she's um, making me feel encouraged and okay about my mistake. But anyway, I ordered this bag, and it was a collaboration between you so-and-so, and this is confusing, and Lambstrings yarn, and she dyed up the yarn that beautifully matches, and I think this would be so pretty in a shawl. So I thought, okay, I'll get this and I'm gonna order the jumbo bag because I needed something large to hold um, bigger projects like the coziest memory blanket. So I am working on this with scraps from, I, I thought, well, I have so many scraps and I do like to use all of something. It's not very big. And so here's what I have so far. I am using a few so far that, like for instance this, I haven't knit anything with. This is a mini that I think came from Mermaid Knitting, and I'd ordered about three little mini packs from her, and this was one of them. But I realized that when I was planning it out, I planned to make it 270 squares and then a border around it. So this is really just going to be a lap blanket, and I thought, I don't have 270 scraps. Eventually I might, but I'll want this done before then. So this is what I have so far. And I have a stitch marker down here because this is ultimately the center of the blanket. I am doing, if you can see, there, I am doing the diagonals coming towards each other here. And then I will add on down here and have them come this way 
and this way so this will be the center so what I'm doing is 18 squares 3 by 6 going one way and then I'll do 18 here here and here and then I thought I'd just start to work around the edge and at the end I'm going to do some sort of a bind off or edging or something I might do an applied eye cord edging or perhaps crochet on an edging to it but it, I'm really enjoying it I started off with one square and then I didn't touch it for several months and then I, I really need to take some of these scraps and do something with them and then I was doing three a day. My goal is to do six a week. That way, that's one a day, and it's a nice little morning project before my um, before I start watching my grandson. So I can get up and do a square, have my coffee, get my shower, etc. So I thought that would, and but doing six days a week or six a week maybe gives me a little break that I don't get one done. So that's my plan. Don't know how it works. Still going to take a really long time to finish it, even if I do that. And another project that's really similar is once I, I so I'm using these scraps up, but I'm not. I, I'm using them and there's still scrap left over. So I thought I will do a granny stripe crochet blanket. So I don't have very much here. This is the, I'm putting it bottom up. This was my cast on it was that um, the foundation chainless foundation I in my on my project page I did link to the tutorial that showed me how to do that and I'm not a great crocheter but I, I have trouble following crochet patterns I think I need some help with crochet patterns but I had learned as a teenager to knit granny squares and made two rather large afghans just a con one big square and I don't know what happened to those they were all acrylic yarns but they lasted me for a long time so this is just stripes I made a magic cake out of scraps that I've already put into the granny looks better probably from this side from the into the granny uh, into the mitered square blanket I took the leftover scraps and then um, made this magic cake about hundred and seventy something grams and I thought oh, it's gonna come off the ball winder so I'll stop here but I took each one I tried to put a different number of grams of yarn into each color so that they wouldn't all start and stop at the same place and I didn't do anything over, I think, 11 grams. So I still have leftover. I don't know what third project I'm gonna come up with for that. And this is, I mean, I'm keeping in my Mrs. Brown's bag. And I caught the tag there, so it's got a little phrase on it. Sorry about that, Mrs. Brown's bags. And uh, uh, this was a pretty pattern. I've had that for a little while. Okay, so those are my, um, works in progress and my finished objects, but I realized I forgot a finished object that I absolutely want to show you. And because this is the piece with the children's literature integration. So this is a book I want to share with you. I think that it makes a, it would make a wonderful baby shower gift or just a parent or grandparent wanting to make it for their child or their children. I did use this in school. I used this book with um, kindergarten classes, and it's been around for a little while. I, I don't recall, maybe 2006 or seven was the copyright date. It's Phoebe Sweater, written by Joanna Johnson, illustrated by Eric Johnson, who I believe is her husband. And it's a delightful children's story about a little mouse whose mother is knitting her a new sweater during the time that they are expecting a new member in the family. And the whole story has Phoebe with her little doll throughout the story. And there's two super cool things about this book. The first is there is on YouTube about a less than two minute long video that is a time lapse of the real sweater the, uh, to fit a child being knit. So they did a time lapse and it's really clever. I always showed that in my um, in the library after I would read this. I usually read this book to kindergarten or first grade, and that 
seeing it happen after you've listened to a story about it, which is fiction, is a nice um, nonfiction tie and also just it, it puts it together for uh, little minds and actually it's just kind of fun to watch. I've watched it numerous times um, because I would there were always four kindergarten classes so I would do it four times every year. So I've seen it quite a bit and really enjoyed that. The second really cool thing about this book for knitters is in the back are knitting patterns for both uh, two sizes I think for a sweater for little girls and it makes more of a sweater coat, I think, because it's got a hood, it buttons up, and it's long. So I think it could be a, a nice um, jacket for mild days in the winter or autumn, late spring days that get chilly sometimes. And then there's a pattern to make the stuffed little mouse here. And while I was teaching, I did not make it. I wanted to every year. And I actually bought yarn to make the sweater. First of all, I thought, well, I'll just make the sweater. And I swatched up with three different yarns and I was very unhappy with the result. So I gave it up. And then last year I started looking for the yarn. I thought, I'm gonna get the yarn that they used. And I finally found it first from Paradise Fibers, and I, I don't know why this time, I, I didn't see, I think, the sweater yarn, but I saw the yarn to make the mouse and the dress. So I ordered that, and then later decided I have to do the sweater. So started looking for that, and they had it. I ordered one skein, not paying attention to the pattern that it used one and a quarter, and I knit the sweater, and it didn't have a hood. I ran out and I, I actually think I mean, I'm, I didn't make it as many rows as the pattern said, but it certainly fits right. So my gauge must not have been right there, but it, I made it without the hood and then said, I've got to have the hood because look at the picture in the book. It's got to match. What little child isn't going to say, I can hear my grandson right now saying, where's her hood? So I did another search and found, um, it's called, I'm going to put it at the bottom because I'm going to say it wrong. Woo Knit Shop, I think is what it is, but I will definitely uh, make show notes and indicate where um, I found that. So I was able to get more of this. Here is the little mouse. She has adorable ears. I didn't, I'm not very good at doing the face. I, I stitched it on, embroidery on with some yarn. Uh, a lot of people I saw on Project Pages actually put felt here and sewed it down, but child safe because it's you know nothing to come off other than yarn. And under her little jacket or jacket coat sweater is the little dress, and she's got a cute little pink tail. I did the legs a little differently, the closure a little differently than I did the arms because. I wasn't happy that I couldn't get that any tighter and you could see some of the fiber fill there. So I think I did an extra row of decreases where there weren't as many stitches and left on the needle before I pulled it through and that made a little bit tighter circle there. So I think that's an adaptation that or modification I would make if I was to make it again. Um, very pleased with this particular pattern. So this was done in Brown Sheep Lamb's Pride Worsted for the body of the little stuffed animal and the dress and then Bulky, same company, same brown sheep, superwash, bulky for the sweater. And um, then I used a Galway by Plymouth Yarns in a sport weight black just to do that embroidery for the eyes and then I used some of the other the pink that went with the dress that matched the dress for the nose and the mouth and I used I'd have to look at my, I'm sorry I did not look on my project page to see what size needles that I used that but it is on my project page along with notes of any changes and any number of different number of rows that I did on that as well. So that's my literature component. And I do have a number of books that um, talk about weaving and um, some nonfiction books that talk about um, shearing from sheep to sweater. And uh, so I wanna, if, um, if I can 
can continue this, I would like to share more of those with, um, with you each episode. That's bringing something of me and my personality into the knitting as well. So um, coming up next, I would like to participate, I, excuse me, while I reach over here, grab it. I want to participate with Ellie from Craft House Magic. She wants to do a doodle along and knit along for, to make the Stephen West pattern, the doodler. And this is one I, I had wanted to make, but um, when she said she was gonna do it, I thought, okay, now's the time to do it. And it takes three colors, and I did have two colors I knew I wanted to use. The first one is this skein. It is a Merino Singles. It's from Zia Wools. And she just, I just watched, I think Saturday or Sunday, today's Monday, uh, her first podcast. And I was so happy. Her name is Dag. And um, she's the creator of Zia Wools. She's in New Mexico, I believe. And I bought this a little while back and I just loved it was going to put in another shawl that I ended up not making. And so at that time, I had purchased this Malabrigo in chocolate Amargo colorway. And this is um, sock, their sock yarn. It is superwash merino wool. But this shawl takes three colors, and I really wanted that pink. I love pink, and I really wanted that pink, but I wanted it. This yarn is not a single, but I, I already had it, so I wasn't gonna buy a brown single, but I ordered another Malabrigo, but this one's a single, and it's not the sock yarn. It is in English Rose colorway can see that and it's a hundred percent merino wool so this is my combo but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent decided on what's gonna be where in the shawl so I'm excited to start that it's gonna start in August so that's on craft house magic her podcast she's and she has a uh, Ravelry group as well so that's coming up next and what else is coming up next? Oh, well, the Shawl Society, too. The fourth shawl in this series is going to be out, I think, Thursday this week, Thursday or Friday. So I'll definitely be doing that. That's a two-color shawl, and I'm waiting to see it to decide um, how what colors I'll use. I'm really, really hoping to use Stash. That was one of my goals this year. I did have to buy the one skein for the Villa Wrap but I use two stash, so that's my. The next thing I wanna do is um, I saw on Instagram when Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast posted, she made uh, Roxy the Hippo, designed by Lauren Slagle of Lolo Did It, and I decided I would like to make that, and I have printed out the pattern, and my grandson saw it, and he wants it, so even though I did order pink, yarn for the feet. He doesn't care. He loves Phoebe Mouse. Every time he sees her, he wants Phoebe. So, um, when I ordered yarn for this, I ordered the kit and they sent the fiber fill and this adorable bag. That's just such a cute way to send that. And it has a kit that includes the safety eyes. I said I didn't mind what color because I do have a lot of safety eyes. So, um, I thought, well, if I get a color I don't want, I can always use ones that I already have, and um, that way people who had requests would get more chance of get what they want. These are the this is the yarn that came with it, and um, this the pink is Hello Gorgeous. This is plush sock, and the light gray is the Naked Hippo. So I'm going to use these two colors, and I'm going to knit that Roxy the Hippo and I'm excited to start that. So that's the three things that I have uh, planned for what's coming up next. I set some goals for myself this year for knitting. I belong to the group on Ravelry 12 Shells in 12 Months. I joined it two years ago, midway through the year, and that year I think I did five shawls that qualified. You have to have a certain amount of meterage and um, 
a certain depth of your shawls to qualify. So I think I originally had one in there and then I realized it didn't use the enough yardage. So I had to take that one out. So that first year, I didn't start till August, so joint till August. And I'd already done a couple of shawls, but I didn't get 12 that year. But last year I got more than 12. And this year I have done 10 of the 12. So the doodler will make 11 and doing the fourth shawl and shawl society will make 12. So I should get more than that. And I have a couple more I want to do in the future. The other goal I set for myself was to do the 12 pairs of socks in 12 months for Box of Socks Cal, as I had mentioned before. And a personal goal was to do some different things, different heels, different toes, adding contrast, heels, cuffs, and toes, afterthought, everything. I, I have done toe up before. It's not, that wouldn't be something new particularly, but I do wanna do another pair and hopefully get my increases to look better. I think my decreases look better than my increases, so I, I always do cuff down. So those are some of the goals that I had set for myself this year. And um, I wanna talk just a tiny bit about the name of my podcast, In a Pickle Knitting. I came up with that name because I get myself in a pickle a lot of times with knitting because I bite off more than I can chew. So both of those are idioms, meaning you've gotten yourself in trouble by your own fault because you've taken on more than you can do. You put yourself in a difficult position. And that happened to me last summer was a big in a pickle. Somehow I signed up for five mystery knit alongs, shawl knit alongs at pretty much the same time. And I was keeping up sort of okay and then it got away from me so there were a couple that I didn't finish in the time and I like to keep up with the clues I like to be done on time and be done and um, that's a personal pressure thing but I tend to think I can do more than my time really allows that said I'm possibly gonna get myself in a pickle here if anybody watches this that that is um, I have I watch a lot of podcasts and um, something that I enjoy with most of them is knitting along. I join in a lot of the knit alongs and I thought, I don't have any followers. Maybe no one will see this. Maybe I won't even post it up, put it up out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in with both feet and probably get myself in a pickle with knitting. But I have come up with some prizes for some knit alongs and some things that I wanna knit and I'd love to have people knit along with me and because I enjoy it so much with other groups. So let me tell you what I'd like to, to start. And that is, first of all, a stuffy along because I wanna do Roxy the hippo. So that'll be my um, stuffy and I'd love to have other people maybe do that one or other ones and I have a prize. So my prize is based on the story that I was telling you about Phoebe's sweater. This copy is part of the prize. And the rest of the prize is a box that has enough stuffing to more than stuff Phoebe, Phoebe's little mouse, and enough yarn. I didn't, one of these two I only used half a skein. The other one I used a little bit more than half, so a skein is definitely enough. And this is a skein and it's more than a skein and a half. I used a skein, a little bit over a skein and a quarter, I think, for the sweater. So enough yarn and some of the black Plymouth Galway that I told you I used and the buttons for the sweater. So those materials and the book is a prize for a random person chosen, provided. It might just be me. I might be the only person in there, but I hope somebody will also come along and want to knit a stuffy. Um, for rules, I will post it in the, I'll make a thread. I'm going to make a group in a pickle knitting on Ravelry, and I will put a thread in there for a stuffy along, a chat thread and a finished objects thread, and I will draw a, pri a random number for that if anybody finishes it. I would say that, um, Stuffy should be at least 50 grams of yarn, but it could be two 25 gram stuffies. 
So just as long as you use 50 grams of yarn to create your stuffies and post a picture, I'm not going to put an ending date because of course right now nobody's in there. Um, so leave something pretty generous um, hope, because I know if, if I get anybody to follow it all, it'll take a little while. Um, I want to do another one. And that is, as I told you, I did that Agatha Christie pattern from Olivia Villarreal, if that's how it's said. And I apologize if it's not. As I told you, she has more than one pattern. She has at least four, and it might be five, that are Miss Marple based. This is called Primrose. And isn't that beautiful? And I found that Cauldron of Colors, I think they're in Canada, or she's in Canada maybe, um, is making Miss Marple colorways. So this one, here's her card. Oh, that's upside down. Cauldron of Colors. And this is a 25% merino, 25% nylon, and it is called Aunt Jane's Cottage Garden. So I've got this marble colorway and this marble pattern, and I love greens and pinks, so um, I'm going to use this to knit, and I hoped somebody might knit along with me to knit socks or anything else if it's Agatha Christie inspired. And as a prize, I ordered two skeins of that Cauldron of Colors yarn. And this is called, I think, Aunt Jane's China. And I don't want to take it out of the bag. I was really having a hard time deciding because I love this yellow sticking out here. Um, and in pink, of course. But I like green a little bit more, so I decided to, I would keep the green one and that this could be a prize. So um, you don't have to knit socks, but knit something from a pattern or a yarn that's um, Agatha Christie inspired, and this is a surprise. And I as well get myself in a big pickle, I don't care. I enjoyed so much making my socks from that sock blank by um, Andre Sue Knits that I'm going to knit a pair of, again, vanilla socks from this Gale's Art blank that I have. It's doubled this, I've got it to just fold it over pretty much the same on both sides. And I thought that was so pretty. I love the colors. It, it has sparkle. So this would only be my second pair of socks ever that are on a sparkle base. I did a pair from the Cozy Knitter, the Winter Wonderland socks had a silver Stellina. And this is, um, looks like silver Stellina to me. And this is Gail's art. I got this at Maryland Sheep and Wool. And it is in the Sea Garden colorway or pattern design, Sea Garden. So I'd like to do a knit along with sock blanks. And you can knit anything out of a sock blank. This is just a ball of yarn that's knit up and you're pulling it off. And I will say, I have heard people talk about um, not enjoying knitting from a sock blank, that the crinkle in the yarn, and there is, uh, where's my sock blank? There's definitely I'm sorry for bending back down. There's definitely, it, the yarn is definitely crinkled when it comes off. I'll tell you, I was, I had a little bit of concern. It didn't bother me at all. That, not at all did it bother me, and it blocked right out, but I even thought it looked fine. Tensioning my yarn, I'm always pulling it, so I didn't, I don't see the crinkle then, and maybe the socks looked a little different after, before and after blocking, but didn't bother me. Now I know that, you know, it's, that's valid. Everybody knits differently and just did that, that concerns some people, but it didn't bother me. So if, you, if you've been wanting to try a sock blank, um, knit anything from it. You can knit a shawl from it or socks or mittens or a hat. Um, I'd like to do a knit along. I'd like that you use at least um, 50 grams or more in the project. And I don't think on any of these projects uh, we'll take whips. Just let's start something new because um, I'm going to leave really long, you know, if I get anybody in there, and I am saying that, knowing that this may not be anybody's cup of tea, but I hope that it is, and if it is, um, I would really like to have company knitting along with me, and if so, once people are there, we just give enough time for people to finish, to, so give a very generous t time frame. So, um, Please join us. Oh, well, you'd like to know what you're going to get if you win that one. 
I told you that I tried to get those Andre Sue sock blanks through her Etsy shop and did finally the Swan and the Monarch. And then one day I knew that she lived near Richmond, Virginia. I saw on Instagram she was going to be at Dances with Wool. And we had just been down to the Powhatan Festival of Fiber not too long before I saw this. And I asked my husband, please, can we go? Because he drives for us. Not, not that I can't, but I'm not taking that length of trip, round trip by myself. And um, so he said, sure, let's go. It's a Saturday morning. And uh, I met her. She is the nicest person. She's exactly like she seems when you see her on a podcast. So sweet, personable. She was engaging and I mean, she talked to me, and, and I'm really nervous in those situations. I don't talk to people um, that I don't know very easily. Once I know somebody, I never shut up, but um, she just, she was so gracious and lovely. She gave me two hugs. She was just fabulous. Well, I bought several sock blanks that day. And um, when I got home, I loved them all, but I realized too the color families were pretty similar, so the socks would be different, but um, the base color was fairly similar. So I decided, when I decided to try podcasting, one could be a podcast gift. So I have a sock, Andre Sue Knits Sock Blank. Is that not adorable? Chickens. They are so cute. And I love this teal. And that's the color that they're, I have two that are very similar teal. But I bought a mini as well that goes with it to do heels, cuffs, toes, or maybe just heels and toes. But whatever. Not use it at all if you don't want. But that would be the prize for the sock blank knit along. So I'm going to head over to Ravelry and I'm going to make a group. And I'm going to put a question thread and um, three knit along threads, which I will also put hashtags, so you can hashtag your projects in Instagram. And I'm hoping somebody will want to join me for all three or one, or um, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and what I had to show. I have actually ideas and prizes for three more knit alongs, but I am gonna hold it to the three for right now without jumping in too much with both feet. Um, the question thread, if there's something I forgot to answer or neglected to tell you and you want to know or uh, in any way, anything you want to know, um, please post questions there and I will either answer in that thread or uh, in the thread and on a next episode of a podcast. Presuming I get brave enough to post this in the first place or figure out how. Um, the question thread and also in that same thread or I know down in the bottom on YouTube you can also post comments if you have any growth producing feedback for me if there's something that's really wrong here or something I can fix I, I, I've heard other podcasters talk about things I, I know glare on somebody's glasses was an issue once and um, I I do hope there wasn't a whole lot of glare. I'll tell you, this is not my normal prescription that I wear. Uh, this is probably two prescriptions ago, but they had the least glare. I, I tested and this was this pair had the least glare. So I actually can't see very clearly with them because as I said, it was two years ago. And uh, I know I might not be looking in the right place. I'm not quite sure where to look here, even though I tested it. It's like, well, where was I looking at that part? I can't, couldn't remember. So uh, that's something I know, I know I'll want to work on where to look. I'm hope I hope I'm talking loud enough. My grandson is in taking his nap across the hall from me here, so I don't want to talk too loud. Um, and this is probably the best time of the day for me uh, while he has a nap. Uh, what else did I want to say? I will also post some show notes. So I may have to make a thread for that um, on that in that Ravelry group so that I can list any show uh, the show notes which I actually have already typed out so that um, hopefully it'll just paste in there 
any things that uh, anything I might might have forgotten I will add to the show notes as well and put some things on the screen for me the things on the screen I appreciate that whenever anybody does it my problem is that I knit while I watch podcasts and I can't knit and not look so I, when I see that they're showing yarn I stop and stare um, and if they say something's on the screen that I need I will look and, and go back and rewind if necessary but you might not be looking so um, even though I'll put it there I'll put it in anything in the show notes that I think you might need to know if you've lasted this long I thank you for your patience and your indulgence with my novice state here as podcasting I really appreciate that anyone would want to listen and I hope that I had something to share that you found interesting and I hope that if so, you'll hit that like button and subscribe so that um, I can come, you can watch another if you want. I'm hoping that this might be an every two week event and that there was something that you liked. So thanks again for your patience. This was fun for me. I love to knit. I'm self-taught uh, from YouTube chess. So thanks again for watching and I hope I see you again soon. Bye bye.